Hey guys, this is Tara with Teaching on Lemon Lane, and I am so excited to just give you this quick video walkthrough of the new review game that we will be offering in Teaching on Lemon Lane that I like to call Bombardment, so an explosive game in a volatile battlefield. I am so excited about this game. I think you guys are going to love it. Um, as a teacher, this is something that I wanted for my classroom, and I wanted to create it for my classroom so badly, but time simply would not allow it because the formatting um, that can go into these, especially to get it to the standard that I wanted it to be at, um, it just wasn't in the cards for me. So to be able to offer this to you guys in your own classrooms is so, so, so exciting for me. So I wanted to really quickly just give you a rundown of what the game is, how you can implement it, and how you can add these fun twists and challenges that are going to make this whole um, game of bombardment better and more exciting than just a simple kind of review game, right? So let's go ahead and jump into it. I'm going to be using this fifth grade um, kind of end of year math review as an example. However, all of the review games that we create for Bombardment will follow the same template. So the coloring may be different, the font style may be different, but the functionality and the formatting will still be the same. Speaking of formatting, um, please do not forget that these slides have been carefully formatted to work just right. Do not delete any of the slides or add any of the slides to the game. If there is some functionality that is off, you've tweaked some things and you can't figure out how to get it right, um, go back to your account and re-download the activity and just start from new again. Um, text is editable. This is something that not everyone does, but I feel like as a teacher, you need that flexibility in order to meet your students' needs. So text is editable. Feel free to edit that, but do not mess with the slides. And make sure if you are editing the text and even the solutions that the letter response, so let's say that the correct answer is A, um, the correct answer needs to stay A. So make sure that you get that formatting correctly as well if you do decide to go in and edit these. Um, and then just, of course, another reminder that these templates are for personal use only. We have worked so hard and put so many hours um, to kind of bring this to you, and I'm just really excited to jump in. So getting started, I would begin by dividing students into teams. Um, I always recommend smaller groups. Um, no more than five students per team. Another thing that might be helpful to do that I would do with my class anytime we were doing a review game like this is that I would just do a quick kind of snapshot assessment, which was as simple as having students give me a thumbs up. Everybody's heads would be down. We would talk about the um, unit that we would be reviewing and students would give me a thumbs up if they felt like they were a five, um, if they were a four, a three or a two or a one. And a five would be, I can do this. I'm extremely confident. I do not need any help. I can even teach this. Four is I'm confident. Um, three is I'm getting it, two is I need a lot of help, and one I'm completely lost. And by using those quick just snapshot assessments that no one needs to see, I was able to better group my students. So I would make sure that I had at least one student that felt extremely confident in every single group and one you know, that was mid-level. And so that just helped me to make sure that um, the teams that I was putting together um, were fair and also that they students had someone to kind of like rely on. So it, I don't know, just a helpful thing. Um, you'll begin by having a team go first. You will need to keep track of their score on the whiteboard. I know that there are different review games that can actually keep track of the score for you. Um, but in order to have the functionality of it that I wanted to with kind of these twists and turns that just make it extremely unpredictable, um, adding the scoring to it, it almost makes it too complex. Um, and it just wasn't quite where I wanted it to be. So you will need to have a scorekeeper, whether that be you or maybe you have a student that, you know, just needs that extra attention and love, um, having them be the score master, especially because it's more simple math is a great way to involve them as well. So a team will go first. They will pick a question on our Jeopardy style board. They will have the chance to answer. You can decide the set amount of time um, for each question that students have to answer it. Um, you'll notice one of these kind of twists that we have is like a time crunch sticker. So you can actually add a time constraint to some of the questions that you want to. Um, and we'll jump into that a little bit more. But teams will have a chance to answer. I prefer to have every student show their work, record an answer for every single question, not just the question that they're working on. And one way to motivate that is if the team gets it wrong, 
the next team that would be in like that consecutive order to go would have a chance to answer. And if they answer it, they can steal that point value and then it would be their turn to go as well. So make sure that that is a motivating factor that they know that they'll have a chance to steal if the team that was choosing answers incorrectly. And you would just kind of go through that consecutive order until someone got it right. Or if no one get it right, got, no one gets the question right, you would just simply move on. Um, Again, every student shows their work for every problem, whether they are answering answering it or not. I think that's extremely important to enforce. So if the team is correct, they get the point value. If it's incorrect, it goes on to the next one. And the game continues. And I like to play it to where they can pick whichever category and whichever point value they would like to until there are no more. Um, we have created this to where the 100 questions are simpler than your 600 point value questions. So that's something that students can know that they kind of scaffold and that the questions build. So if they're a little nervous, start with a lower point value. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a cold. So that is why I sound probably a little bit off. So let's talk about the twists and turns that we've talked about. Um, or that I've kind of mentioned, because again, this is what's going to make it more competitive, more exciting, and extremely unpredictable. Things can change really, really quickly in a game of bombardment. Um, my favorite part about this is that I've allowed you to decide how explosive this game is going to be. So let's go ahead and go all the way down to our bonus slides. If you want, you can click on this link here and it'll bring you directly there. But let's jump into our bonus slides. So here's our bonus slide section, and I jump in here. Now, what I've done is that these fun little moving stickers indicate that this question actually has an added task or challenge associated with it. And here I've written what how I would use them. But again, this text is editable. So if you want to change it to something else that fits within your classroom a little bit more, um, you absolutely can. Maybe if it's a double up question and they get it right, they get five extra minutes of recess or just something fun like that. So you can edit this to your own classroom needs or wants, um, or you can play it exactly how I have it. So for example, the star is a double up. And if I wanted to add a double up to one of the questions, I would simply just copy this. So command copy or control copy. I go to the question that I want to paste it on. And just for example sake, I'm going to do it um, all within kind of this operations category. So we'll say that we'll make operations and algebraic thinking for 100. I'll paste that sticker in there. I can move it to a place where it's going to be seen. I can make it a little bit bigger. But again, students will know that when they see this pop up on a question, and it'll be a surprise, um, that this point value is actually now worth double. So instead of for 100, it's actually for 200. Or if we had done it on 600, it would be for 1200. So things can get really exciting really fast here. So that's how we indicate that a question is double or double up. And again, you can continue to just copy and paste um, those double ups into the question slides that you want to kind of just add a little bit more fun or excitement to. So I've shown you the double up. Let's go back down to the bo um, bonus slides and talk about a few of the others. So for the most part, um, like bombardment, what this whole game is named after, this, when students get the answer correctly, they can bomb an opposing team for the same amount of points that they just won. So let's say that we did bombardment on, we'll come back up here, and I add it to a question slide and it's a 400 point. So I add bombardment to 400. That means that if the team gets it correctly, they can bomb an opposing team um, for 400 points to take away that amount. So that's how we show a bombardment one. Um, let's jump back in. Um, I'm gonna come back up to our flames of fortune and our wager war because those two take a little bit more formatting, but it's extremely simple, like copy and paste simple. So team swap, this is before answering. The team can um, steal a player from another team, but that other team gets first choice of their players from that original team to steal someone back. Um, Battle Royale, this is a big one. This actually dethrones the leaderboard. So they would swap the point totals if they answer it correctly. Um, time crunch, let's go ahead and look at the time crunch one because this one's really fun. So let's say that I want to add a time constraint to one of the slides. So I'll come up here and we'll just keep going through these questions that are just in that first category. And I copy and paste my time crunch sticker. And now that I have a time crunch sticker, what's really cool is that I've actually hyperlinked this. So when you are within the slides, you'll click on this sticker and it'll take you to 
my timer slide right here. And what's so great about these is now, again, before you click on that timer, make sure that the team has all the information needed um, before they start that timer. If you need to go back to the question, you can click on this button and it'll, if you are on that slide to begin with, it'll take you right back there. Um, if not, you might have to kind of circle back to the game board, then to that question um, and then to your timers, but it should work pretty seamlessly for you. And I'll show you how to do that. But the teacher or the game master will pick the amount of time that students have to solve the problem within. So if we want it to be a little bit quicker, a little bit more fast paced, we would select a minute and you'll simply click play and that timer will begin to count down. So that's our time crunch challenge. Let's go back to our other power ups. Um, wager war. Let's do the risky roulette one next. Risky roulette, you'll copy and paste. We'll add that sticker to a question slide. Let's jump in to this one. So I copy and paste my risky roulette sticker in there. And if students see this sticker within the question slide, when they click on that sticker or that risky roulette button, it's going to take them to my spinner slide. And look at how fun this is. Now, this is called risky roulette for a reason because not every one of these is something that students are going to want to get. So if they answer it correctly, they have a chance to spin. But you'll notice some of these are like minus 500. To spin, you simply click in the center of the wheel. Once we are in slideshow um, view, it'll spin and then you click again to stop it and it'll show them kind of what that point value is. So again, another just fun and exciting kind of twist to the game. Let's talk about the last two challenges that you might choose to use. Flames of Fortune and Wager War um, both require you to cover the question and students to wager how many points they would like to kind of put on the line before actually seeing what the question is. So in order to do that, you need to copy both the, let's say the Flames of Fortune. I like this one. It's like you either go, you know, in a blaze of glory or up in smoke. I thought that was a fun one. So let's go ahead and paste it here. So here is my Flames of Fortune. And now the next thing that I need to do, because they are going to be wagering um, how many points that they think they can get this one correct for, or are they going to lose that amount of points, we need to cover up the question. And in order to do that, you need a disappearing box. Here are our disappearing boxes right here. You can simply um, copy the box, go back up to the question where we added our flame, and I should have paid attention. There it is and you're going to paste that disappearing box in. And now what's great is that you need to do this before you play the game. And now you have the option, you could just leave the response, like the answer solution options there, and that'll kind of give them a clue as to what they might be answering, or you can just cover everything, but we need to still see that flame there. Maybe we have a few words poking out, but essentially this disappearing box has been formatted to where when you are in play, once you click on that, that box will be um, will disappear. So you'll need students to lock in their point value with how much they're wagering. And then when they're ready to play, you can click on the box, make it disappear, and then students can answer. The only difference between our Flames of Fortune and our Wager War is that the Wager War is when everyone plays. So if students see a Wager War on one of the question slides, let's find one that is empty. Wager War um, says that everyone puts a wager in and gets to play for a point value on this one. And again, you'll need a disappearing box for this one as well. So we go back to our tools. I grab a disappearing box. I simply um, copy it. And now we're going to paste it. And again, you need to add these disappearing boxes and these stickers before you play the game with your students. And it is completely up to you. Maybe you just do one of each. Maybe you do a whole bunch, whatever you think your students are going to respond to. And the more you play it, um, you'll get a better idea of kind of what the students love and what's exciting. Um, for this one, I'll just cover that much. But again, this is a disappearing box. Okay. One last thing that I want to touch on before we actually go into the slideshow that I'm really excited about um, is this record and reflect page. Um, I've included this. This was something that was really important to me as we created this is that I wanted you to be able to get a really quick snapshot of your students and their understanding. So to download the PDF of this, I've included a hyperlink. So you could just go hyperlink, open hyperlink, 
and it'll automatically take you here and you can just very easily print from this view but let's go ahead and zoom in and i'll just highlight kind of what this is so this template um, this activity will work in conjunction with our bombardment slides our review game slides and it'll also work with the task cards that are available Essentially what it is, is it is a recording page for students. So they'll use this category. This is where they kind of lock in that final answer. Clearly there's not enough room for students to show their work. I like to use just a whiteboard and a marker for students to kind of work everything out. And then they record their final answer there, or they can use the back of the page or a piece of scratch paper if you actually want to see their work. Now from here, you'll see this little X and a check mark. This is where they can check or circle or color in whether they missed that or if they actually got the answer correct. And they get to do that for every single one. Down here is where they rate their understanding on this category. So of all of these questions, how are they feeling about this category? This is a great way, way for you, especially at the end of the year or at the end of a chapter, to quickly see where you need to go back and let maybe spend a little bit more time kind of reviewing or clarifying. So students will rate their understanding and then they'll also represent their score kind of in this area model here. So there's six um, squares or rectangles here. If they got five out of six, they would color in five. I wanted you to very quickly have a visual representation um, that you could just see and kind of move through. The last thing that I've included in this um, is always extremely important to me. And I want to make sure that students have a place to celebrate their attitude and effort, especially when they worked really hard and they maybe didn't see a ton of success. So the students, you know, they kept a great attitude. They worked their you know, as hard as they could, they tried their best, they need a place to kind of celebrate that as well, because it can be extremely kind of frustrating and demoralizing to maybe go through all of these you've tried, um, but you miss a lot of them, right? But if they tried, um, that needs to be celebrated. And so this circle up here is where they rate their attitude and effort. Again, this will work in conjunction with the task cards or the review game, um, but I would make sure that you print this off for your students just because it works great as a pre-assessment, as a post-assessment, as a snapshot assessment, however you want to use it. Um, this is just a great way to kind of gauge where your students are at and where their understanding is and where those holes or gaps are that you need to go back and kind of review. Okay, that's everything. Let's jump in and actually see how this functions now. So I'm going to go ahead and click here. We're going to play from the instruction slide. To get to the next slide here, I simply just click. And now what's so cool is that I've even gone in through all of this and made it to where these questions are going to disappear once you're done with them too. So students can click on any of these. Let's click on 300. You'll notice we have our double up star. That means that this amount is worth 300 or not 300, 600 points now. And I got A, it says you did it, and I can return to the game board. Now it's someone else's turn. Let's just click through all of these and make sure that they all work. We've got another double up. Let's say I think it's B, not quite right. I single click on return to question. It takes me back and we got it. Return to the game board. You'll notice as we click on those that they're disappearing, so that's great. Remember with time crunch, let's say that I clicked on it too quickly and I need to return to the question. So I click, single click on return to question, it brings me back. I make sure students have all of the information that they need, but they cannot start working on the question yet. When students are ready to start working, we click on time crunch and we start the timer. I think one minute for that one is enough. So I click and instead of pushing on this button, which seems like that's where you should click, you're actually going to click on the timer itself or just hover above it and the play um, button will show. I click play, it starts to count down. Um, and again, this is up for you as the teacher to be able to decide. I wanted you to have some flexibility with the amount of time that you assign to each question. So you decide what you think is an appropriate amount of time that adds a little bit of pressure. But again, the whole purpose of this is not to see how quickly a student can solve a question. It's practice, right? So we don't want them to be so rushed that mistakes are being made, just rushed enough that they feel that kind of added pressure or excitement, which of course leads to engagement. So we single click and we return to our game board. Here's one of our disappearing squares. So this is Flames of Fortune. So the teams will wager, I bet 500 points, or maybe they have 3,000 points and they say, we want to wager all of our 3,000 points. They wager them. We click on the disappearing um, box. It single clicks and it disappears. And then students have the chance to answer. They can lock in their answer. If it wasn't quite right, they would lose all of the points that they just wagered. We can click A and we see kind of how this works. Let's try another one. 
bombardment. Again, this is a fun one. If they get it correctly, the point value that they get, they can actually bomb an opposing team and take that amount away. We go back to the game board and risky roulette. This is the last one that I think that you need to see. So again, this is for 600. They do the question if they get it correctly. Um, which with this one, I'm thinking you should actually spin the roulette before they know because you want them to do it afterwards. So here's how I would do this one, just because of the sequence of where this is going to take you. If you took a click on A, B, C, or D, it's going to take you back to that game board and it's going to erase that point value. So I think the best way for you to get back to this point where they can actually answer and see if they get it correctly is we're going to give them time to solve. They decide if it's A, B, C, or D. And then before locking in your answer, you're going to go and click on Risky Roulette and you're going to spin it. Now remember to spin it, we need to click in the center of the wheel. I click in the center of the wheel and in order to stop it, I need to click in the center of the wheel again and it stops. Now that one, you guys can argue with each other where you think it is. If it's too close, I would simply just spin again. Ooh, plus 400. So we're really, really hopeful that our students get it right. Now, instead of going back to the game board, we're going to go back to that question because we want to decide if we got it right. Let's say they got A, dang it, they missed their chance of a bonus 400 points. That B, they did it and we would return back to the game board. Um, I think that that's everything. Here's wager war. The last one that we should probably do. Remember when you see wager war, everyone gets to wager. So they get to decide how many points that they are wagering or putting on the line before they even get to see the question or answer. Once everyone has locked in that point value, we click on the disappearing square and each team goes through, they lock in their final answer. And then we decide which um, answer or which response is correct. If they get it incorrectly, they will lose all of the points that they wagered. If they get it correctly, they get those points back. Um, that is everything though. So again, so excited about this game. I think that you and your class will love it. If you have any questions, please email us at hello teaching on lemon lane at gmail.com. Um, I think you guys are going to love it. I want to hear all about it. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.